great deal of life out there, a mind-boggling amount. And I also discovered that our, t our life here is also uh, on a very grand scale. We don't come here and live one life as a, a male or female. This is an ongoing process. The best analogy I could think of is that we're at school. Some of us are in the first grade. Some of us are seniors getting ready to graduate. You know, the Gandhis, the Jesus, Buddhas, these kind of people have been here a thousand times. All that life experience is, is in their spirit. Each time you come here and complete a cycle of life, every moment of that life becomes part of your soul. All your life experience evolves you as a spirit. And you actually get shinier. Um, younger souls are kind of foggy and cloudy. And then others are brilliant balls of white that radiate this tremendous energy, love and joy. And that energy comes from them having gone through here a thousand times and dealt with every adversity, experienced every emotion a hundred ways, and overcome all these things. So this is very much a school here, and you are both male and female. Uh, you were probably a man. You could have been your mother's son last time, or it, it, it doesn't matter. Um, and it seems like there's eddies and tides where you will have people in your life that were in your life before. As I said, like your mother might be your son in your next life. You are drawn to, uh, there's a few people that you will, you will know in each one of your lives. Other people you'll just bump into once and, and you may never see them again. But there's very much, that's the that's the big secret of life to me, is that we're here at school, we come back here over and over until we're ready to graduate. Now, I, once in a while, when I get out of bed, get out of my body at night, I would go visit with my, I thought it was God at the time, because it was this ball of white light, and it was huge, like the size of a house. And, the joy radiating from this ball of light is pretty indescribable. So naturally, I thought this was God because it was so seemed so omnipotent to me. And I would approach this light, and as I got closer, the radiation would intensify, and I would just stand there and bathe in it. You know, it goes right through you when you're in your spirit form. And uh, I'd stand there for a while and enjoy that, and and my guardian angel, that's who it was, would say, okay, little Johnny, time to go back now. <laughs> we, we all have a guardian angel with us. And one of my auras, I have, um, you can glimpse it, there's a little white light just behind my shoulder. And these are people just like us that have completed this school Earth Life School. They have graduated, and it seems that the first thing you do once you graduate is you stick around and help somebody else go through the process. Because this is a very tough school here. You gotta, you gotta give credit to any soul that comes here and takes part in this school because it's very harsh reality here. Compressed learning, lots of adversity. Some people, you know, they, they bow out because it was too much for them. They couldn't handle it. They're just kind of screwing themselves, anybody who commits suicide, because they actually chose to come here. But they, they were caught up in, in whatever problems they had and decided to end the contract, unfortunately. But um, when I was 13, I'm out flying around, and I would get this tug on my silver cord. My body would be calling me back, saying, it's time, come back, because I could only keep the body alive for so long. The heartbeat is perhaps twice a minute. And I ignored the tug, 
because I'm out flying around. It was the greatest thing. And uh, the tug went away, so cool. I'm out flying around some more, be bopping around. I get the tug again the second time. It's more insistent. Get back here, get back here. No, I'm not done yet. Got some more flying to do. A lot of sightseeing. It's a big planet. Third time, get the tug. It's real insistent. Emergency. Get back now. Shoot back to the body. All I had to do was conjure the image of myself lying in bed. And bang, wherever I was, I could be in another dimension, I could be here flying around, and I would zip right back. That was my safety valve. I, I never got scared uh, on the other side. I just knew I could always get back in my body like that. And once I w was back in my body, I was safe from any dangers uh, of the spirit world. There are some bad energies out there, and you know, you gotta be a little bit careful. Tug on the cord, emergency, emergency, hurry up, get back, shoot back home. Normally I would just zip, I would just smoothly meld right back into my body. But this time, <laughs> it was hard as marble. I could not get in. It was like my body just turned to concrete somehow. <laughs> and I got a little panicky. I got a lot of panicky. I was pretty scared. My brothers are sleeping there. I'm like, oh man, my mom, you know, I gotta get back in there. I got this life. I gotta live this. I'm not supposed to to die now. So I hovered over myself and calmed down and focused and concentrated. And I got my left foot inside my foot, right foot. It took me a long time, but eventually I was able to get back inside, stood up, one of those, and that's probably why it stopped happening, is the fear factor, the fear of not being able to get back in. The fear factor keeps a lot of people from, that's the biggest barrier to going out of body. And I found in the years since that when I'm lying in bed at night and you're in between sleep and, and awake, And you get that jolt. Yeah, you're starting to detach. And my conscious mind would realize what's happening and yank me back, saying, no, don't want to go there again. <laughs> I'll be going there again, you know, when, when my body expires. Even though I know there's really nothing to be afraid of, um, that fear factor, I think, is what keeps me from having the experience again. But every experience is very vivid. I remember them in detail to this day. I always will. So fast forward to 1999. And I had some friends that thought I had missed my calling and said I should be a writer. <laughs> hey, you're a good writer. You should, be. you should write books. You're a good writer. I had an idea for a character in, in the 80s, actually, for this action-adventure, uh, this kid who goes out of body and, you know, had spies and heroines and all this. But I never thought I would write a book, but in 1999, I thought, you know, I'm going to sit down and, and write a book. So my, my main character, the hero of the story, well, the main hero, 29-year-old guy lives out in the Rocky Mountains. And he has a terrifying encounter. And the first scene of the book, I based that on what happened to me in Bigfoot. And in the story, it's a bear. But I wanted to capture that terrifying moment when I thought for sure that I was going to be ripped to shreds. So the bear comes and, and leaves. And uh, the hero stands up, sees his body lying on the ground. And after the momentary confusion, he takes off into the sky and discovers strange powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal. 